The story of Bendy and the Ink Machine may be over, but there are still mysteries surrounding the game and its characters which we can only speculate on. And that is exactly what I plan to do over the course of a series of new theory videos analysing certain characters and moments from the game's five chapters which never received a concrete resolution. So in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we take a look at the story of Sammy Lawrence, recapping what we know about this character and then speculating on what exactly happened to him after the events of Chapter 2 and how he may have had the ability to control other inky creations within the studio, such as the Searchers and the Lost Ones. This is everything you need to know about Sammy Lawrence, so sit back, relax and let's get started. Who exactly is Sammy Lawrence? Well as you may or may not remember, Sammy was the director of the music department, an area of the studio Henry visits during the second chapter of the game. It was here that Sammy would compose and conduct music for the various melodies which featured throughout the Bendy cartoons directed by Joey Drew. We know that Sammy had a close relationship with Susie Campbell, who he worked with on certain songs. You can see Susie's recording booth on the screen at the moment. In fact, it was Sammy Lawrence who broke the bad news to Susie that she was being replaced by a new vocalist known as Alison Pendle. But I walked into the recording booth today. Sammy was there with that. We also know that Sammy had help writing the lyrics to the music he composed and his assistant was known as Jack Fane, who became the searcher we squashed during our visit to the sewer system. Sorry I had to do that. Nice hat though. But what else do we know about this strange character? What was his personality like? From listening to various audio logs throughout Bendy Chapter 2, it quickly becomes obvious that Sammy was quite unhinged and frustrated as a result of his boss Joey Drew's crazy decision making. The biggest problem Sammy had was with Joey's insistence upon placing pipes all around his music department to pump ink to the ink machine, as well as placing the drainage unit in his own office to boot. This caused Sammy to build a secret sanctuary within the walls of a recording studio, a place where he could be at peace and complete his work without distraction. Upon discovering this sanctuary, Henry notices the ramblings of a madman scribbled all over the walls with a message from Sammy which reads as follows. Sing a happy song, whistle a merry tune, wait for his arrival, he's coming very soon. This message seems to reference Bendy as a creature who is coming very soon. Sammy indeed seemed to worship the Ink Demon, believing he would set him free. But of course, that didn't happen. Sammy came to a tragic end during the final moments of Chapter 2, only to return during Chapter 5. How did this come to be? What happened to Sammy after he entered this room and shut the door behind him? Well, before we get to that, let's quickly recap how I believe Sammy adopted this inky form in the first place and why exactly he worships Bendy with such absolute devotion and faith. After all, we must remember Sammy was once human like everyone else at the studio and simply wishes to be free of his inky prison. In a recent tweet from the official Bendy Game account on Twitter, the following was stated. Fair warning from old man Joey. Show up early, pay up quickly. You don't want to find out what happened to those who can't manage that. Or perhaps you've already met some of them down in the dark abyss below. This message suggests that Joey targeted those who displeased him for use during the initial stages of the Ink Machine experiments. Experiments we now know involved the resurrection of human souls through the ink to create living cartoon creations such as the Boris clones Henry encounters on his journey through the studio. We also know that the Boris clones were the more refined creations born out of these experiments. Many test subjects were not so fortunate and instead became, as Alice states, a shapeless slug. We have seen these premature specimens popping up in the form of searchers and lost ones. So if we were to put a timeline to events, the original people Joey used for the experiments would have been the most shapeless and indistinct forms, the searchers. 
Then, the Lost Ones came next. These abominations retained a humanoid appearance with the general look of a person, and this includes features such as five digits on each hand and foot. Finally, we have the Boris clones, who had four digits on each hand, much larger hands, and of course cartoon features such as the snout. Sammy fits in right between the design of the Lost Ones and that of Boris the Wolf. He has three fingers and a thumb just like a cartoon character, and has large hands to boot, but retains the general look of a human. So, what does this mean? Well, it means that Sammy would have been one of the later workers experimented on by Joey, and likely was targeted for these experiments because he wasn't coming into work with the kind of ask-no-questions, upbeat attitude that Joey wanted, which may have led to Sammy's rapid mental collapse and his obsession with appeasing the Ink Demon by singing a merry song and whistling a merry tune. See how this is starting to tie together now? Sammy had fallen prey to Joey, the creator, and now wishes to do exactly what needs to be done to reverse the process. So with that said, let's move on to examining how Sammy interacts with Henry during the ritual scene at the end of Chapter 2, where he meets a sticky end. The one line that repeatedly leaps out to us during Sammy's monologue is... Wait, you look familiar to me. Sammy registers that Henry looks familiar, but Henry makes no comment about recognising Sammy himself, which suggests the two have never worked together at the studio. This means Sammy started there after Henry had resigned. So how does Sammy remember Henry? Well, this is actually proof the game's two developers, The Meatly and Mike Mood, had a story in mind from the very start of this project. This line is a reference to Henry's never-ending loop. We now know that each time Henry completes a cycle and plays the last reel, the cartoon world around him resets and his nightmare begins all over again. We know this from the many messages left around the place, and it is apparent from these messages that characters retain fragments of memories from their prior experiences in this strange world after each reset. Which means Sammy recognises Henry here because he has met him hundreds of times before. So that clears that one up then. Next, let's quickly explain what happens to Sammy after he locks himself in the room to Henry's left here. We hear him scream as he is attacked by Demon Bendy, and then notice a puddle of ink spread from underneath the doorframe, suggesting he is dead. But, of course, we had many teases of his return, and eventually he did midway through Chapter 5. I had made a theory explaining how Sammy could return many months ago, and I pretty much stand by what I said in that video, so check it out for an in-depth analysis, but the quick version is this. We know that the ink itself acts as a portal to reanimate those trapped within back into existence. When Henry is struck down, he is transported to a portal-like device inside the ink, which springs him back to life at the nearest Bendy statue. We can hear voices emanating from bodies and bendy statues throughout the game. Take a listen. Alice also refers to her rebirth this way during Chapter 3. So it seems obvious that Sammy did likely die here, but was then reborn later on from the ink once again, possibly at one of these bendy statues. It is also possible he simply managed to disappear into one of the cracks in the wall. We do see him do this earlier in the chapter after all. It's time. Where the hell did he go? In the morning, you may wait. This would explain why his voice sounds damaged in Chapter 5. He may have been severely wounded by Bendy and had his vocal cords damaged during the struggle. So let's finish this video by looking at our encounter with Sammy in Chapter 5 and the new information this meeting provided us with. Many people have asked me, why is Sammy so angry at Henry and why does he say things such as betrayed, abandoned and you left me to rot? Well, this isn't actually directed towards Henry at all. Listen to another line that Sammy speaks during this fight. <laughs> he loved. He always loves. He says... He lies. He always lies. This is referring to another person. I believe this person is Joey Drew. After all, the common line throughout the game is of course, the creator lied to us, which we eventually discover meant Joey Drew lied to us. 
It seems Joey used the same tactic on Sammy that he used on Susie Campbell, luring him into a false sense of security with a promise of greatness and success and then delivering them a cruel and torturous fate. An artist like Sammy would have lapped up the promise of his dreams coming true and so made an ideal target for Joey's dark experiments. And this is exactly who Sammy is referring to during this fight. Henry simply gets caught in the crossfire of a madman. I'm going to free you now. Free your head right off your shoulders. We still have one final point to analyse and that is the line Alison speaks after Sammy's defeat. She mentions that Sammy was keeping the searchers at bay. Sammy must have been keeping them at bay. After his death we hear a rumbling noise and lo and behold a mass of both searchers and lost ones spring up from the ground to lay waste to Henry and his new allies. We see this happen in chapter 2 as well. After Sammy is attacked by Bendy and Henry breaks free from his post, searchers pop up immediately. When he is looking down on Henry from the projector booth in chapter 2 after exiting his sanctuary, a large group of searchers spawn in. Almost as if Sammy Lawrence has the ability to summon them on command. And what was Sammy's job when he worked at the studio as a human? He composed and conducted music. So could Sammy have gained the power to control lesser beings such as the Searchers as a result of being reborn from the Ink Machine? Quite possibly. And so I believe Sammy Lawrence did have control over other creations, those who were only partially formed and so had minds that were easily manipulated and bent to his will. Hence why he would not have control over characters such as Allison and Tom. But of course, that's just a theory. It certainly would explain why he prayed to Bendy so much though. Bendy could be seen as the most powerful of all beings in this cartoon world, and as the original creation of both Henry and Joey, he may have believed this godlike creature held the key to his return to human form if enough sacrifice was made. And that brings us to the end of our in-depth look at Sammy Lawrence. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of this character and what game theories you would like to see me cover in the future. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So if you are interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.